All right, this session is called Digital Dumpster Divers. I started calling PD digital dumpster diving because when you call it PD, it's just like, oh God, let's talk about anal surgery. Um, <laughs> Um, it should, why don't we call it something different? I, I like to call PD self-directed staff development. Okay, try this on with me, okay? I take you to a site and show you 100, 1,000 resources and say, okay, you're free. Go have fun till 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, you're gonna come to the microphone one at a time and talk about one or two tools you found that you thought might be good for kids. I trust you. Teachers go nuts, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, because usually they go to PD and they sit all day and they don't get anything they can use. And that's why they start sitting in the back. I understand they're grading papers, protecting themselves from boring because the brain wants to do that. It protects itself from boring because boring causes brain damage. So I understand that. So when I trust you and let you go, how do I know what you teach? How do I know what you know? What kind of arrogance would be tied to that? So this session is one of those where I'm going to show you where some resources are. Bookmark those things. And you're not going to have time to do all that today. Uh, a day like this is like driving through New York in a taxi 100 mile an hour. You're going to see a lot of sights, but you can't remember most of it. So tag what you can, bookmark what you can, tweet what you can. I tweet on hashtags so that I can go back home, hit the hashtag, and find all my notes. That's all. And I don't just find my notes. I find all your notes, too. It's a great way to hold the learning together. That's what, what I'm doing there. So I'm going to be all over the road like a guy who broke out of prison in a stolen laundry truck. Um, so if you need to take a break, let's say you want to ignore me for a while and just dig into something I showed you, do that. Do that. Okay? So I'll go fast. I'll go slow. I'll be all over the place. And so if that's going to bother you or you get motion sick, if you have to leave, it won't, it won't hurt my feelings. I'm going to show you a few things on my website that I've built over the years that might be of some use to you. And if not, that's okay. No ego here. Okay, so I'm going to go to kevinhoneycutt.org, H-O-N-E-Y-C-U-T-T, kevinhoneycutt.org, and it will take you here. I'm going to show you where some stuff lives, okay? I just kind of keep notes on my website, and every cool thing I find, I put it there. So I apologize that it looks like a mess. And I have web guys who tell me my website's totally wrong, and I don't care. I don't care what they think. I don't have time for perfect. I never will, probably. Um, anyway, so if this page ever loads, how many devices do we all have going at the same time? And I could tether to my phone. I could do that. Let me do that real quick. I'll tether to my phone. I wonder what AT&T's doing. Personal hotspot. Let's use some data. Turn on Bluetooth. Yay. I have like ADHD. You can see I just keep clicking and clicking. Okay, so here's the page. Okay, so I'm going to show you some stuff. I was going to North Dakota, no, South Dakota. I was working with uh, reservation teachers, and they all got new iPads. Um, and they were going to open them the minute I got there. They had never touched them, and my day was going to start with them taking them out of the box. Um, there was no plan. I didn't know till the night before that they didn't have a plan for apps. They had no plan, and the teachers weren't allowed to take them home. So they had a cart and they could all touch them that day. I'm gonna to have to be doing tech support the whole day. I can't train, all I can do is fix problems. I knew I was running into the teeth of that buzz saw, so I stayed up that night at the Windjammer Inn, where they have the very worst drinks. Don't drink there ever, uh, and don't drink with locals because they're professionals. Um, um, but anyway, I built a website um, for them um, that looked like apps. And I'm going to show you this. This is the kind of stuff that I do if this will launch. At the top of my site, there's a thing that says iPad users click here. All that is is a website that's designed to look like apps. So the teachers would go there and they would think they had all these apps. And all they were is tiles that lead to different tools. Um, but I wanted to give them something they could do until noon so I could talk to the tech team and have them come up with a strategy so we could save this day, you know, the best I could. Well, so the site, the, the, the tools still remain, and they're still there. So all the music tools that I talk about are all on this page that will eventually load. Um, and and there, a lot of the things that I talk about are going to be there. So there's one warehouse of things, if you're interested. A, a few months ago, I asked a few thousand educators worldwide what were their favorite tools for classrooms and tell me what they do. That's the way I asked the question. And they just, God, they gave me a bunch. And I'm, so I'm the librarian. I put them all together onto one page so that anyone can go into that page. And that page ages, and so we need new tools all the time. So I'm always looking for people who are trying new things, right? So I'm smart, but we're brilliant. Together, we're brilliant. So I, I, 
I, I want to I partner with you on that. So you saw the one, and that was cool. Now, I'm still going to tether to my phone if I can, because I think I might be able to go faster. But for some reason, I'm not getting the hot spot to pop up. I went to one place, and I was the internet. <laughs> my phone was the only internet. It was like 50 people. And everyone jumped onto my wireless, and was like, that didn't work too well. <laughs> you never know where you're going to be. I'll tell you a story while I'm waiting for this to happen. I was on Groot Island in Northern Territory, Australia. I ended up in the darndest places, and I was bringing iPads to Aboriginal children. So uh, on Australia, I love Australia because the way the people are, and they say things to you like, uh, how you going, Kevin? Not how you doing, how you going? How you going, Kevin? And I thought he meant, I said, at the urinal, typically. Um, <laughs> Why are you asking this question? Um, uh, they're very funny people. <laughs> and he said, point of information, half the dingoes on the island will bite you, but half won't. <laughs> How is that helpful at all, you know? <laughs> and so I'm working with these Aboriginal kids, and it's an interesting, Groot Island, if you Google it, it's G-R-O-O-T-O, -O, Groot Island, E-Y-L-A-N-D-T, Island, for some reason. I think it's the people who, well, first got, went there. Uh, and took it over. Um, so you have this indigenous population, and the language there is 30,000 years old. It's the oldest language on the planet, right? And what's interesting is that this generation of children, their children, doesn't want to learn the language. So in a language that's 30,000 years old will die this generation if they don't become interested in their own culture. But the West came in, and they found magnesium on the island. Magnesium is pretty useful, and the richest deposit on the planet was found on Groot, which is the best day and the worst day of their lives. It's also a heavy metal, right? So it can cause neurological problems when the dust becomes airborne. So I'm on the island, and I'm just trying to humble myself and get a feel for what their daily life is like. And the teachers on the island are crazy. They're crazy. First of all, once a month they have Kentucky Fried Chicken. They fly it in. It costs a fortune. And they heat it in someone's oven, and it's a party night, KFC night. They don't have much on Groot. Um, and, so, and there's a history there. The, the native population, um, things happen. Like, uh, I got there, and the night before I got there, there was a spearing. And when I say a spearing, someone killed someone with a spear. This old weapon, this ancient weapon that they have, someone killed someone, which means now there's sorry business. Sorry business means... The whole community is sorry, so they shut down the whole community. None of the kids go to school until they say sorry business is over. So that just happened. And there's going to be a reprisal maybe at the school. So all the schools have lockdown gates that can come down really fast in case there's a reprisal at the school. When I went into one of the classrooms, on the outside of the building, there were all these slices. Slices. I said, what's this? They said, oh, it's machete marks from the last reprisal. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. There's no door on the classroom, you know. A dingo came walking in. I was at the, at the front board there, and the dingo parked itself right in front of my groin area, and I didn't know if it was one that bites or one that doesn't, right? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I decide to teach uh, to kids how to draw their totem animals. I find out their totem animals are dugongs and, and, and porpoises and whales and sharks and manta rays. So I'm just doing drawing lessons with them. And my colleague, uh, Greg O'Connor, we decided to build an app that night uh, at the Dugong Inn, the one place to stay. And we, bu we built an app. He interviewed the tribal elders and got them to tell stories about the totem animals in language. Right? And we recorded all that and put it in the app. And I recorded myself drawing. So when they do my drawing tutorials, they're hearing the stories in their own language. We decided to try to reflect their language back onto them as people who float in. And they call white people white clouds on the island because we float in, but we don't rain. Well, that's an indictment, you know, and I didn't want to be a white cloud. Um, I still feel called to go there. The commercial fishing trawlers go by Groot Island with these huge nets, and they catch all these, these creatures, and then they kill a lot of totem animals that they don't really want, but they get them caught in the net. And, and then when the nets are old, they cut them loose and leave them drifting. The natives call these ghost nets. They kill for decades afterwards. So they go out in their boats, and they pull them in. They pull them in, and they cut them in pieces, and they make dolls out of them to sell to tourists like me for $125 each. I love this story because they've taken a bad thing and they've turned it into something good. And I'm a collector of stories. And I talk to kids. I know you have a hard life. I talk about Groot Island. It's this exotic place. But the example is, yes, life wasn't easy. Uh, what are you going to do about that? How do you turn that into opportunity? We can complain all day, but what does that really do for you? you know? So anyway, I told you that whole story in the page is just now loading. Um, isn't that? OK. And I still don't have my own wireless popping up for some reason. Yeah, I, three times I've done that, but, but yeah. It's back up. It just came back up. 
Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. At the same time. You know, when they open a stadium, you know what they do at the, at the very end, before they open it? They send someone to every toilet and flush them all at the same time. And if it works, they open the stadium. We need a version of that for conferences. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we'll try that one more time. I have not been to a tech conference where we don't challenge it because more and more you have a laptop, you have a phone, you have multiple devices, and it's really hard to account for all of that, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. There's Kevin's iPhone. Let's try that one out and see if it works. Come on, baby. Because there's a couple things I want to show you. And thanks for waiting. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. There she blows. Okay, let's try it one more time. Woohoo, AT and T. Boom. There it is. Okay. So, okay. So you have that iPad. You just click here, and some of those, some of those links might be useful to you. I hope so. If you click this too and scroll to the bottom of that page, you'll find all the music and creativity apps that, that I like, and I'm always looking for more all the time. I want kids to draw, I want them to create on their iPad, on their iPhone. I, I, I make them do this. Make something with this. Stop shoplifting from other people, right? Make something that belongs to you. They want to use commercial music? No, make your own. All of these things to let you make music, make your own. I love music together with documentary film or with video because music mirrors narrative. All the things that happen in narrative that we teach happen in the music, too. So I can approach narrative with reluctant writers by letting them do soundtracks. So I'm always thinking like a Trojan horse. How, how do I build this Trojan horse but pack it full of accidental learning they have to do in meeting the goal? If that, does that make sense to you? Right, so some of my favorite apps out there, Voice Band is one of them. And I was showing this earlier. I'm going to show you a couple of these. Voice Band right, lets you hum into your phone but it turns your voice into the instrument. I'm going to do a little song for you with just my voice here, okay? <coughs> Best guitar. <coughs> Drums, lead guitar, bass guitar, synthesizer, all of that. Kids can just hum beatbox and make their own drums. It's got a multi-track recorder on it. So kids on the way to school could have on headphones and a little mic. I put the mic in my mouth so the background noise doesn't get in there. And you can go to YouTube and put in voice band. The tutorial you'll find is amazing. It's the inventor of voice band making a song in about five minutes and doing all the parts. I show it to kids and say, kids, don't try to be as good as these guys. They're adults. And they get mad, and then they really want to work hard, so I, I throw it to them that way. I showed you iShred this morning. There's a couple more on here, though, I'd love to show you. I do so much with GarageBand and kids because there's so much you can do with GarageBand and kids um, to, get, to get them started trying some things. I'm going to plug in my iPad here um, and uh, put in this, let's see, this guy right here. Give me just a second to try, try, move this over, and I'll put, the, uh, I'll put the VGA here. I'm going to show you some of the, the stuff I've been doing. I did this on Groot Island with the Aboriginal kids, and they couldn't understand me and I couldn't understand them, but music works and art works, so we can start making music right away. I travel with a tiny little amplifier, um, and it's a Roland Travel Cube. It's about 175 bucks. It takes six batteries, and we'll go all day on those batteries so that um, I, I don't have to have electricity even if I, if I don't want to. Let's see if this pops up now. Okay, baby. And boom. Okay, so we'll do this and this. All right. Now I'm going to just walk you through a couple things. If you've got GarageBand, and any iPad can have GarageBand, any iPhone can have GarageBand, um, and I like it because it's free and it comes with a whole lot of stuff that you don't have to pay for. But what I like is I can get kids making music really fast. Now there's, there's a band that I found in Australia called the Axis of Awesome. Who's seen the Axis of Awesome? Oh, I love to show kids that video. I always bleep out the parts that are inappropriate, but I show them that video and I say, kids, we can make a song with just four chords. What songs could we make? Thousands with four chords. Well, I don't know how to play. Don't bother me with trifles, right? We're, we're going to play anyway. And I do this with grade school and I do this with high school and I'll bring in lights and I'll bring in whatever. So here's a set of drums that we were using this morning, right? So I'm going to plug that bad boy in. Let me just unplug this and plug this in over here. What happened? Oh, is that my wife? Uh, just before I do a keynote, I always say I love you because I'm nervous, and then she always knows that I just need to. So usually she'll say, go kick butt. She's like the Rocky moment, you know, when she woke up and said, win. And then suddenly, <laughs> I can do anything. Thank you, wife. 
Um, so if a kid can freehand drums, that's cool. I usually give him like, I'll say. And that's all they'll do, right? And if they want to be fancy, I'll say do a roll. So they're going. I'm not good at drums, right? But I try. Uh-oh. Okay, Russ Kale, talk to you later. Okay, Russ. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, back to my app. All right, so now you got a kid who can't keep rhythm at all. She can't keep rhythm at all, but she wants to so bad. I'm not going to let her fail. In fact, I want to create bands in my room, bands around curriculum. I don't mention curriculum first. Don't do that, right? Act like you're breaking all the rules and doing something that has nothing to do with your content area first, right? So I need amplifiers, and I have no money, so... I found out that all those white cheap speakers that came with the old PCs, they're all amplifiers, right? So if you go to Amazon and buy what I call a bridge, right? It's an eighth inch stereo to eighth inch stereo column. Plug it in here and I buy splitters. And I plug the splitters into splitters until I can get five kids into one set of speakers. So there's a band, there's a band, there's a band, there's a band. They're Tweetwood Mac. They can all name themselves. And, and they start playing. And it's terrible when they start. It sounds so bad. It sounds like picking up a cat with pliers. It's just so painful. So it's best to have headphones that really block sound at first. But what you'll find is the kids start falling into a rhythm. And I love to do this with special needs kids. I don't think there are different kinds of kids. I think kids respond to music. Music is pretty powerful. Um, so they start just doing that. And then I decide how to weave in the curriculum, right? A documentary. Oh, you could do a song, but Sony will not approve your lyrics until you have at least 10 vocab words from the last unit. Now, I'm the jerk. I'm Sony, but it's not personal, okay? So now you're going to have to weave in the vocab words and make it work. Oh, by the way, I want the aesthetic of the time period. What's the time period? Civil War. Oh, I have to listen to songs? You get to listen to songs. You're welcome. Um, so I'm doing, I'm doing more than just playing with music. You have to understand I've got multiple levels going on in my head. But the beginning, I always make it easy so every kid wins. Um, I also go to Walmart and buy those Paper Jams guitars. Have you seen them? Paper Jams. It's cardboard. I put Velcro on it. I put Velcro on the iPad and I stick it to the Paper Jams guitar and then they can wear it and it feels more like a rock instrument and less like a piece of technology. So the kids are rocking out their Paper Jams guitars. I bring lights and fog machines. Moms and dads can come but they can't play. They can only watch and hold up their lighter apps. Right? <laughs> so I'm going to do a little example for you here. Um, I will do guitar first. I'm just going to do a little guitar example. So let's pretend that your kid's in my class and Christmas is coming up and I know that a lot of Christmas songs a lot of Christmas songs are three chords. A lot of them are E and uh, A and B. So I, I practice. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put on autoplay so they can push one button. In fact, I'll do it with my nose. Okay, let's pretend I was at a special needs conference and it was kids who were paralyzed. And we, the kids could still play it with their nose. So we just set the iPad up so they could go. And you should see these kids. They're like, oh yeah, I am rocking with my nose. Wipe off the screen afterwards though, okay? <laughs> uh, so... This will play for them. So what can you do? Now, three, a little more sophisticated. On a warm summer's evening, on a train bound for nowhere, you can do everything by Kenny Rogers, everything by Beach Boys, everything by Elvis, most Garth Brooks, tell me a country song and I could probably play it in these three chords, right? Now, if the kid wants to be more creative, you turn off autoplay and they get to strum, right? So I'm just going to, I teach them crawly fingers. This is crawly fingers. Uh, little kids, let's say crawly fingers. Just stay inside the line. Okay. So let's just do a little. Come, they told me ba -ra -ba 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 -ba. a newborn. I got the sheet music right here in front of them. If I don't know it, I Google uh, Little John Boy Chords. Ultimate Guitar Chords pops up and I Xerox it and stick it on the wall in front of the device. Is it good? I don't care. I'm not, I'm not Juilliard. I just want them to get started and be proud and play in front of everyone. And suddenly they start thinking, I'm pretty good. They had their little rock and roll moment. I even bring costumes so they can like wear the costumes and stuff like that uh, to get little kids excited. Now, if I want to really go into theory, you can do scales. Let's go electric. <laughs> That's roots rock right here. 
I've got, I've got pedals. These pedals cost $125 to $175 each. They're free in the app. So now I've got effects pedals, right? So I've got you on Roots Rock, you on an acoustic guitar, you on an electric guitar. You're all playing in the same band with the same app. Same chords, right? So now I've got all of that. How do I insert without breaking the deal? Right? Don't put too much payload in. How do I get enough payload in that they remember uh, and yet this thing keeps going? Now here's hard rock, okay? I'll let you hear that. So let's do a song, let's do a song, let's turn this off. And G, I'm gonna go into G progression, I'm gonna click the wrench here, and instead of E major, I'm gonna go G, so let's do G, because I wanna do some ARIO speed wagon. Let's see here, do I have, can I see, there we go, G. Don't let go. Da, da. Okay, so I get the kids out there looking for the songs they want to do, right? If it's piano, we got an auto keyboard. Of course, they could play a real piano, and that would be that would be cool if they can actually play the piano. But I don't want that to stop us. If they can't, we'll just go to smart piano. Same chords I was teaching every other kid. You want strings? You got orchestra? Whatever you want. Smart keyboard. Let's do a song on the smart keyboard, and let's go. Um, Four chords, right? G, D, simply C sharp minor, C, but we'll do it this way. Let's try to do a song. Can, can, can. All they're doing is touching, touching these things. So one kid's doing that, one kid's doing violin, one kid's doing a piano, one kid's doing guitar, uh, and, they're, and they're a little band. Now, your job is to try this on and say, okay, Kevin, I get it. They're going to like this. Don't let them open the presents till you know what's inside. Right? That's the mistake we made when technology first came out. We let them play first. We loose the hounds too soon. If you've got, if you've got expectations, get them out before the concert. Right? If they're writing lyrics and that's part of your curriculum, do that. They'll do all of that work gladly for that opportunity, but don't waste that and let them do that first, right? Don't let them hurry that way. I made that mistake a lot when I first got started. I'm gonna show you another one that we were doing earlier, but I wanna bring up my guitar friend. Hey, can you come up here and play along with me? I'm gonna show them band, B-A-N-D, and I wanna do 12 bar blues. 12 bar blues um, lets me, I do a lot of blues theory camps with junior high kids, and I use this app to do that. Um, so this is band, B-A-N-D. And it works on the iPad. I use it on the iPhone, um, B-A-N-D, okay? So I'll show you the different things that it does. I'm gonna go into here first. You got drums, this is one app. You got dance drums, okay. I got one in the guitar there for you too. I'm taking care of you, man. You got dance drums, I got bass guitar, I got piano, and I got this, 12 bar blues. Now watch this. I'm teaching your kids, look, if you like rock and roll, you better like blues, because that's where it came from. It came from, okay? And I want you to go all the way back to Muddy Waters to know where this came from. Stop shoplifting culture, okay? It all started, it, it all started in the South, and it all started with, with the black culture, and it started with, and we stole it. Elvis came along and stole it. I want to take you all the way back to where it came from, right? The, other, the rest of the world's interested. A lot of times we forget our own history, right? 12-bar blues is kind of a special thing, but it works a certain way, right? So with this app, I can go first position, first position. So I tell the kids, touch this side, and drop on this side. So I'm gonna do that again. Stay with me, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now go to A, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now back to two, three. You see how I use the syllables? Now back to, now back to, to keep them in time. Now back to third position, which is a B7. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Most kids, Elementary, I can have them doing it in five minutes, right? You want drums? Just touch the beat button. 
Ready? What lead guitar? That inside bunch. Ready? I just bent a string on my iPad, right? <laughs> now I'm putting this together with you. So I'm going to do a little back and you just jump in like, because you can mix it, right? Tradigital mini concert, tradigital. You got a real guitar and you can play it, you bring it, you bring it. You can't, you can still play. Everyone's invited, everyone. The purists hate this, right? Oh, that's just, that's, I don't care. <coughs> I'm not doing Juilliard, right? So I'm just going to do a little back. Jump in when you feel it, okay? <laughs> Who's getting video? Amazing, amazing. Now, let's say we're doing, let's say we're doing something like, uh, I can download apps like Pro, Pro Band. Pro Band, it pops up and it gives me all these different blues songs, like from the past, and I can choose Stevie's House, Stevie Ray Vaughan, that is, right? So if I go on here and click that, I can choose the key. So if you want to play an E, what do you want to play, an E? Sure. I'm going to give you a backup, and you just go for it, Okay. Now who is this for? Who's it for? Let's say the kid who's just getting started and he doesn't have any support from home, he doesn't have a backup, he doesn't have anyone to play with. This is my partner, this little app is my partner on the road while I'm trying to learn those licks. So I got somebody besides just me to play along with. And there's a lot of kids like that. They're isolated. They don't have anything like that. So if I can find ways to extend their talent, I'm going to look for that. I want to show you another one that I absolutely love. It's called Harmonica. Harmonica turns your phone, your, your iPhone, your Android. Or I've got one more I want to show you that we might be able to fit together here um, when you're using um, the iPad or the Android. Let me see if I still got Harmonica here. Um, this one's kind of fun. This is Finger Piano. And uh, what it does is it has all these songs built into it, and kids can just play the blue key, right? So if they want to play... I'm sitting on my couch learning how to do this. My wife makes me wear headphones. She loves me, but she makes me wear headphones um, because I'm not that good at it yet. Right? That one's good. Huh? Thank you so much. This one I love, but in cold and flu season, not as much. So free play. Free play for harmonica. It has a tutorial, so you can stand in front of the mirror and it will tell you where to go next and gently teach you how to play the harmonica. Again, wipe it off with disinfectant if you can, so I don't want you getting sick. Um, one of the other ones that kids absolutely usually love is um, ocarina. Ocarina lets you blow into the instrument and create a woodwind instrument with it. And I'm probably looking right at it if anyone sees ocarina pop up there. Ocarina. Nope, nope. Okay, I'll just leave that one for you. But what's fun is they can just blow into the microphone. They have finger positions on the screen, and there are thousands of transposed songs online at smule.com, S-M-U-L-E.com. So Stairway to Heaven, Christmas songs, everything you can imagine. So you could put sheet music on the end of their device and have them playing like a band. If the dot's blue, your finger's down. If the dot's yellow, uh, white, your finger's up. So even little kids can figure it out pretty quickly. Um, I want to... Um, Next time you're bringing your guitar. Give it up for my man one more time. Thank you for rocking out with me. I appreciate that. 
Some other ones just to throw at you real quick if you're into art. Art Authority is an app that RSS feeds the collections of world museums to one app. I used to buy large reproductions in art to hold up for kids that had facts on the back for hundreds and hundreds of dollars, laminate them so they wouldn't be destroyed. That was my collection. Now one app, but all that out of business. So I can pull up a famous painting, click it, it flips over, and the whole history of that painting is on the back. So art teachers, art authority is one of my favorites. Uh, some of these are my favorites because they're simple, right? Like, like um, I've got some drawing apps on here that are way, way, way simple, like Art Studio. Art Studio lets you, lets you draw, and you can do layered drawings, you can do pencil, you can do um, airbrush, all of those things. Um, I'm always on the lookout here for what, I, for what I can find that gets kids excited, but I also want to keep creativity, always keep creativity uh, in the equation, not just, you know, productivity is wonderful. Productivity without, without creativity is middle management. I think and, and we're outsourcing that pretty quickly. Right, so what are kids building? What are they making? What belongs to them? I'm going to take you to another place. <laughs> I've done that all day. <laughs> a scary place. Um, actually, it shouldn't be too scary. Waiting, waiting, waiting. All right, baby. <laughs> cool. All right. So anyway, if you have any questions about any of these history teachers in the room, where are you at? How many of you, um, Civil War Today, I'm a Civil War buff. Civil War Today is a newspaper, basically, in an app that gives you today's history of the Civil War. And so every day it's a different. Antietam happened. So many men were killed. It's all in the words of the time. So it's almost like they're reliving the Civil War as current news. Love that one. If you do civics or current events, my Congress, my Congress, okay? You launch it, and it shows you the current voting records of everyone in Congress. And you can contact them from the app. Participatory government, anyone? Oh, please, you've got to check this out. If history or current events or civics or government is your thing, um, my Congress is like one of my favorite things. Elements 3D, of course, brings the periodic table of elements to life in a 3D way that kids find it compelling sometimes. There's just a whole lot, a whole lot. Now I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to show you another warehouse, okay? So there's a toolbox there. If you click on that toolbox or the free tools thing under it, it will take you to this giant page of free resources that you can use tomorrow on Chromebooks, on Netbooks, on iPads, on whatever. Uh, you're going to see all of these different things. See how many are there? You could do a whole day of staff development just letting teachers loose on this page, right? And I think we should do that. You don't need a fancy speaker to come in. You just need time. The one thing we don't have enough of is time. Have you noticed? We see something, and we don't have enough time to build the first lesson that we think might work. And you're not going to try it if, you, if you're not sure how it's going to work. So I love the combination of lots of resources, freedom, and time. And I think at the end of the day, it should look like intellectual speed dating. Right? So there are tables with clocks. And you sit down with four people, and you talk about everything you learned. And then the clock goes off, and you go sit with three other people, and you talk about it again. And we just cross-pollinate the whole room. How fast can we all know everything? You can do that with a hashtag if that's what you're into. But I like the personal touch on this stuff, too. So I wanted to show you a couple of the sites I've been using with kids to get them thinking about being entrepreneurs. Lulu.com, and now they have Lulu for kids. So look at Lulu Junior. It's for publishing their books, right? And what I love about this, and I tried out Lulu before I did it with kids, because you have to tame the tool. You have to tame the tool so you don't get fired. I had to understand how Lulu worked. So I went and published two of my school plays on Lulu. And once I did that, I understood how Lulu worked. And then I started talking to kids about what they could do with Lulu. And so I had kids who just really, really needed that boost. They needed something special that belonged to them. And so I got them started, and I helped them publish their first book. One of my little girls, and I always start with the tough ones, because if I can do it with a tough one, I can do it with a gifted one. So give me the tough one that growls all the time, and if I can get her... I can get the rest of them. So I took her to lulu.com, and we took some of her poetry, and we published her first book of poems um, um, called Saving Me, Poetry from My Heart. All right, 10 pages in paperback, basically, is what the book was. Um, and she priced it. And you can price it any way you want. She priced it at $24.95. $24.95 for 10 pages. And she was gouging me, is basically what she was doing there. Um, so I talked her into marking it down, and she marked it down to five fifty two. dollars There's my girl there, right? So her, this is her... I'm using Lulu, right, because I, I know that she'll be a published author. So when the book came out, I bought it. Now, she's legally copyrighted. She's the only writer in our school, including teachers, that has a legal copyrighted book that's been published. That feels pretty good. 
She's a little rock star. She's my little writer, right? And so this is a poor family, so I bought the book myself, and I brought it to the school. I couldn't wait to hand it to her. You ever see a kid launch? Leave scorch marks on the tile. Defy everyone's expectation. I live for those moments. She turned around at her locker, and I'm holding her book. (laughs) She, well, she took it from my hands with the reverence of a Bible. She opened it slowly and said, I misspelled everything. (laughs) Suddenly, she cares about spelling. She never did before. This is curious. Why would she care about spelling? She's a published author, for God's sake. She said to me, she asked me this question, how do I revise? You ever have a day when you just can't believe something happened? (laughs) She asked me how to revise. I'm like, just give me a minute, sweetie. Okay, she... Okay, just click the button that says revise, <coughs> download the, the PDF, and then make adjustments and republish. She revised it, republished it that night, and she has not stopped since. She started her own writer's club. And then I thought, oh my God, we've been paying Life Touch $30,000 to do our yearbook. Not anymore. Went on to lulu.com, keyword searched yearbook, and found all the schools that do this, and we called them on the telephone, of all things, and said, how are you doing this? And we copied them. So we got to save the district 30 grand last year. We could spend that on other things, like teacher salary maybe, like things you need for the classroom. Try this on. We have this new tool. Don't laminate it. It can be lots of things. We're in the publishing business now. What could we do with this? And it's not about Lulu. There'll be a million things that do the same thing. Why? Why do it? What would you do it? If you come up with that list, you're going to be fine, right? Why is important. How? We'll figure it out. We'll figure out how. There's enough people out there, right? So she publishes her book, and uh, suddenly she's on fire. And we want to change things in the school to get kids publishing routinely all the time. Here's another thought. There used to be a thing called the Jason Project. Do you remember this? Remember the Jason Project? Robert Ballard started this because kids started sending him emails after he found the Titanic, and they asked if they could come, he, they could come with him. And it touched his heart, so he started the Jason Project. What happened is there's a satellite farm in Plano, Texas, and they would do uplink there, and the kids would be on this mission, and they would be broadcasting from the field. The kids who got chosen were called Argonauts, and teachers would, 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 would nominate them to do this, and they would talk to classrooms who were part of the Jason Project, which is awesome. It cost millions. While this was going on, I was thinking, what's the trailer park version of this that we could all do? You know, there's got to be a trailer park version. So I tried to rent a satellite dish that I could get 10 laptops on, but that was, that was 10 grand for the day. I couldn't get the grant, and then suddenly every phone could do internet. I went, oh my God, everywhere I go now, we could do broadcasting from the field. So I started experimenting with that right away. I would go to biomes, I would go to different historic sites, and the kids would live blog and broadcast from those sites, right? And I tell my audience, please be watching the live broadcast so the kids are going to see. There's 100 people watching. Oh, they get all excited because there's an audience watching. Grandma's watching. I was using Ustream TV back then on my phone, and grandmas were getting on asking questions in the, in the chat area, right? And the kids are excited. Now, before we ever went to the historic site, we study first. We do our homework. This girl chose the two-seater outhouse. Does she look excited? She's excited. Her grandma pops onto the Ustream channel and she asks this question, what are the corn cobs for? That's the look you get right after that question. Shut up, grandma. So we're doing the sod house. And this is my kid, Jory, here. And Jory's a great kid. He's a great kid. A reluctant writer, a reluctant learner, but a great kid, right? He needs a win. He needs a rock star moment. I think every kid deserves that. And he's just not getting it done. And here's my rule. If you're not done with your report before we leave, we can't take you. I'm sorry you got to get your work done, right? So in class, we write our report, and I help, and I help edit, and then the kids rehearse and rehearse and rehearse, and so that when we get out there, I point a camera and hold up a piece of paper. I don't even use an app. I hold up a piece of paper, but they don't even need the paper because we rehearsed in class. We pre-learned it. This is just this sort of celebration at the end where they get to do this. So we go out to the sod house. Jory got his thing done to the last minute. He's one of those last-minute kids, but he got it done. So we go out there, and he's doing the sod house. Now, I want you to listen to him. Listen to him. He was treating me like, uh, <clears throat> like I worked for him or something. Um, the way he's talking to me when we get there. He said, honey, cut, I'm going to do, do a broad shot, a contact shot with the whole sod house. Then I'm going to do a, an up-close shot. So can you frame me up close with the substrate? And then I'm going to come in the front door. I'm going to hit my mark there. Can you be near the potbelly stove? I'm like, who the freak is this kid? <laughs> Suddenly he's got this like, 
this little ego, this little swagger. So I did all of that, right, while he's doing his report. But I want you to see how what he's good at really mattered in this thing. Can you imagine living in a house made of dirt? Well, early pioneers in the 1800s didn't have to imagine. It was their reality. Today we're going to the Prairie Museum of Art and History to take a close-up look at a sod house. But what is sod? Sod is squares or bricks of dirt cut out of the grasslands so that the roots of the dirt can grow into bricks, interlocking to hold the house together. Let's go inside and see how the house is holding up. This place looks okay for a building made out of dirt. Sod houses like this one were usually around 14 foot in width and 16 foot long. This was a one-family home that contained one bed, one stove, and a dinner table, and they were all in one room. Imagine spending the whole winter cooped up in your house with all your family members who could be a mother, a father, your four brothers, or little sisters. You would have, to, you would have no privacy whatsoever, and you would have to sleep in the same bed. Life was certainly no picnic for the early pioneers, but these humble houses made life a little easier. Reporting for TCA News and Story Chasers, this is Jory. Jory had a rock star day. He was the best. Because he got all this personality, right? But how can he have a life if he doesn't learn to get things done, right? He's got to learn work ethic, too. I've got to make them go together. I can't wait, make it waste so much he won't do it. I can't break the back of it but I do have to have expectations. It wouldn't be fair not to, right? So he did the work, and then he got to shine, and he knows that's the deal now, right? The next time, he wants to do it again. So this is all Kansas history, and it's on point for curriculum. If you think about your curriculum and the things that you teach, what, what else could we do? We have video now, but we should know what we're doing. In my town, we have prairie dogs. And prairie dogs, if, if you have them on your land, you hate them. And if you don't have them on your land, you find them charming. So people who buy land with prairie dogs, they hire this truck that comes in and vacuums them all out. It's the saddest thing you ever saw. It's a transparent hose, and you see, <laughs> I know, right? And then they take them out to another field and blow them out. <laughs> it's terrible. And I love prairie dogs, but you know they also carry diseases and have some things. Um, but because they're nearby, it's a resource, right? Do you have prairie dogs near you? Well, we do, and I say, kids, Kansas has some things. Not a lot, but we have some things. So wouldn't we be smart to get video of those things? Because if the Discovery Channel was doing a documentary, they'd spend 100000 sending a cameraman out here doing research and finding the right... We already know what they are. So let's go get the footage. So how are we going to do that? If you scare prairie dogs, they go underground for exactly 30 minutes. I don't know why, but it's always 30. I've tested this. Because back in the day, I had a flip cam. Remember the flip cam? Flip cam? You turn it on, it stays on for 30 minutes, and then goes off to save battery. So I would turn it on, and 30 minutes later, the prairie dog would come out. It would be wonderful. And then I didn't get any of it because the flip cam had turned off. So then I start designing these blinds. I call them digital blinds with the kids. Make a piece of trash that looks like a piece of trash so no one steals your phone. And put your phone in there, hit record, and walk away. How could we get the prairie dog to come up close to the camera to get close-up video? Why do I want video? Video is an excellent excuse for narration. Narration is research and writing. I'm always up to something here, always up to something. Sometimes I get the footage and give it to all the kids, and they all do their own soundtrack, their own narration. And I usually keep these short, 30 seconds. Five minutes of video takes a gig on a hard drive. I don't have time for the, one, uh, for the Discovery Channel, right? It can't become a time vampire. They've got to be short and sweet. I would love to take them all the way to film school, but that's not happening. And I finally became OK with that, because these projects can drag on if you let them. So I have hard deadlines. I usually have a soft deadline and a hard deadline. If you only have one deadline and they crash against it, they're not doing the project again. If you have a soft deadline where they pre-present, <coughs> that's when they realize how much they still have to do. If you notice this, oh crap, we're not even close to done. Because I make them present as if they were really presenting and they just have to tell us what they're missing. And that's when they start doing the math, right? Now, why are kids this way? Why do they have a hard time with time? I, I do a lot of research to try to find out because I get puzzled by kids and why they always think they have more time than they have. And what I found out is that they have not developed something called the prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that measures time and makes good decisions. Guess what the last thing to develop in a human is? <laughs> this is why kids do stupid things sometimes, and they don't even know. You ask them, when you ask them, why'd you do that, what do they say? It's always the same. Well, I don't know, like Scooby-Doo. Well, I don't know. You know, 
I went to the Learning in the Brain conference at MIT to try to learn more because they'd just done research on, on teenage kids and why they make bad choices. I'm in the front row. I'm ready to take notes, just trying to figure it out. And they showed footage of asking junior high kids this question, is it a good idea to swim with sharks? Girls at that age say, in large numbers, no. What do you think boys at that age say? <laughs> We're different, okay? <laughs> We're different, right? Girls begin to develop that prefrontal cortex by the research around the age of 16, and men marry one. <laughs> so let's pretend you're in my class. You're in my class, and I filmed this footage, and I gave it to all of you, all right? And if you don't have a network, you put it on a thumb drive, and they pass it around. So the kids all have this footage. Now, there's my blind. It's a toilet paper roll, because I've got to get away from this thing far enough that the prairie dogs won't be scared, but a homeless guy could walk through and steal my freaking thing. So I don't care if it's a beer can, I don't care what, I, I think the assignment of having kids make blinds is a good idea. Let's pretend you're in my class. I wanna get footage of a largemouth bass feeding, okay? Design something I can put my phone in that's watertight, and yet I can see the fish underwater. Good luck, go. Now I know how to do that. I know exactly how I would do that. That's me. I'm not unwrapping this present. I'm gonna let you figure it out. I'll let you invent that solution. Wow, you're going to love this lesson, probably, right? And be a rock star, because I gave you that hands-on opportunity. So I love, I love this idea. So I'll, I'll give you a typical what the kids might do, okay? So here's the footage. The prairie dog. The prairie dog is a rodent, a warm-blooded mammal. They live in colonies. Prairie dogs uh, live in these colonies underground. Through the winter, they hibernate. Some prairie dogs watch out. They are sentries. They watch for danger, and they chirp loudly to warn the rest of the colony. Prairie dogs are very cool. I like prairie dogs. The end. <laughs> all it was was an excuse to write. It's all it was. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them. So we have brown recluse, brown recluse spiders in large numbers in Kansas. I could take you to my school and lift any ceiling tile and I'll show you a brown recluse. I'm the theater director and all the props and all the things in the back, brown recluse on them, I promise. Big fat brown recluse, fiddleback spiders. And if you're not familiar with these, don't become familiar with these. Um, th when they bite you, it's awful because uh, the skin rots, right? And the kids should learn about this because in Kansas, if a kid goes into the mudroom, puts on a coat without shaking it out, when it bites you, you rarely feel it at the time of the bite. But by the time you know, depending on where it bit you, you could be in mortal danger. So while they're different than a black widow, right? So, so since I have these, I film these. So before the kids came to school, I brought laundry to school and I put it all over my tables and I let a brown recluse go I let it crawl across the laundry, and I filmed it. Then I killed it dead. She's like, oh, God, then what happened there? I killed it, of course. I killed it. Um, but I got good footage, good footage of it. And I said, kids, I, I got this footage. I need you to go home and get B-roll. Huh? B-roll, you know, the context stuff. Get your mom folding laundry. Okay, so they did. They brought home the, the video. She's folding laundry. And then they cut away to do 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 do, 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 do. It's all story. It's all building the climax. It's all resolution. It's story. It's story. But they got this footage, and we didn't have to put them in danger. So whenever I catch something, like, a, and I've got it on my YouTube channel, steal all my stuff. You can have it all. Steal anything I have. Use it any way you want, any time you want, without asking. I'd be honored. I stole it anyway. <laughs> but I film a lot. I film a lot. If there's a snake, I'm there getting footage. Now, I'd love for the kids to get footage, but they're not with me. So I'm still getting the footage. I'm parking it somewhere that they can all use it so I can give them choices. They love it when they know I shot it. it. It's a lot better than going grabbing someone else's stuff, and I don't have to worry about copyright. And I want them now. You've got devices with cameras. Where are your great pictures? He asked the class. Mr. Heineke, I took a picture of a cat. No, sweetie, sweetie, no. You took a picture of 90% grass. Stop taking lazy pictures. See, they take great selfies. They take their time. If you say take a picture of some historic item, get it done. Are you kidding me? You got a better camera than I taught photography with on your smartphone. You can't stop for a second to take a decent picture. Why would I do that? Because every photograph you take is your intellectual property. It belongs to you. And class, good pictures are money. What? Get a Cafe Press site. Put those good pictures on a thousand products and you're selling worldwide. Start taking better pictures. It's the low hanging fruit of making, right? If you can draw, that's awesome. But if you've got a camera, come on. Where's the Ohio history pictures? Where's the historic architecture? Where's the grandmas holding babies or old people holding hands? Why would I take those? They're universal shots that anyone might like on a coffee cup, right? 
and it belongs to you. Start making a portfolio of things that belong to you. Now you've got something, not just made a paper. It's part of your resume now. Do that, assign that. All right, they go out to recess. There are ants out there. You have a pretty good camera. Point that at that ant hill and have them crawling around the, the next hour. The ant is an insect. It has three body parts, the head, abdomen, and thorax. The ant has an exoskeleton. I, they're never really great, I know, but they're excited. I take my wife's kiddos to, this is K4, to the Wichita Zoo. We're doing animal adaptation videos again, right? So uh, we plan, we plan, we research, they pick their animal. We look at Google Earth and we zoom in on the zoo. We make our strategy. Kids, we're getting off the bus here. We're going to go to the monkey place first, then apes. Okay, this is the way we're going to go. And we're going to be back here for lunch. These are grade school kids. You don't mess around. You keep it moving. You keep it moving. We rehearse in the classroom. They learn their stuff. And it's their big moment. I'm holding up their script. Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'm standing in front of, look at the monkey. He is hanging upside down. He is hanging upside down with his opposable thumb. His opposable thumb lets him hang upside down. That's his animal adaptation. Back to you in the studio, Jossie. And she's nervous. She's nervous. It's so cute, right? When will she forget this? Right. It's permanent, right? And it might not be a whole lot of content, but she's going to remember it. I bet she's going to remember. Then when they get home, they can't wait to share the videos with everyone. They cross-pollinate for free, right? So you can do a lot with that video once it gets done. I just want you to think of this as fun and easier, right? I think we think of video as too hard. We think of, edit. don't edit. I don't edit. I never edit. I only make them short ones. Kids love every bit of stuff they film. They'll show you a whole hour. You got an hour to watch a documentary? No, 30 seconds. I have, I'm, I'm tough on that because I'd like to watch them all, but I have a life too and a baby and a wife. Right? I can't stay at the school constantly or stay on school business all the time. I want you to talk to your shoulder partner for a minute. You're probably already doing a lot with that camera. But to me, the camera is one of the best things about the devices. Right? So what are some of the things we could do that gets kids excited? And how do we tie that to curriculum so it's actually, it goes somewhere? I'm going to give you some time to talk to each other about this. Then I'm going to show you some more resources. So I'm going to shut up for a bit. Go. Um, OK, so Tracy Robinson. Where are you, Tracy Robinson? So let's pretend that Tracy, I, I, I meet Tracy and I think, wow, I, I like Tracy. Um, she's got 257 followers, which means in her Rolodex, she's got people who answer the phone. I get people who join Twitter and they make one friend, one friend. And then they ask questions, they ask for things. It's like someone gets to a party and they want something immediately. I need a beer someone dance with now. No one likes that person. Don't be needy when you first arrive. First, you've got to build a network. You give stuff to get stuff. That's netiquette. So I share quotes. I subscribe to quotes of the day because I know teachers need to be re-inspired all the time. And I copy paste and of course I attribute and I put my own quotes in there. I share ideas and resources. If you're connected to me on Twitter, you're gonna know everything I know forever until you shut me off. And I will drive you crazy, but it's a short drive for some of you. Anyway, um, but what I wanna do is connect to grow people so they're not alone talking in a phone booth to no one, right? I want you to at least be connected to all the people in this room so that you have those people in your back pocket so you can start helping each other and become that online community. So what I like to do is I like to grab people. If you ask me, if you'd send me a direct message and say, Kevin, help, help grow my network, I'm going to say, you must follow Bionic Teacher. Boom. Okay, when I hit this, it's going to go to 46,000 people, and your phone's going to start vibrating, right? So if you need help, that way I can help you. Now let's pretend that you're a kid and you just invented the godium. I can help you there too. But here's my deal, kids. If I point people to your network and you have anything inappropriate, you just hurt me. Can I afford you in social media? I want you to look at yourself in social media and ask yourself if I can afford you. If I can't, fix that. Or flip burgers. Those are your choices. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Let's build your story. People don't buy art, they buy artists, right? And if you come from tough places, it's a great backstory. No new sins, okay? And I can help you. That's the conversation I like to have with kids. And I say, kids, I use this professionally. I can never have a bad word on here. If you drink and tweet, I can't be your friend. Sorry. <laughs> you ever meet a teacher, even a teacher that tweets inappropriate things? Yeah, about teachers who are on Facebook who have the Sunday night blues and they're complaining about going to work. God, don't do that. My kids are in your class. What you're basically saying is that you hate my kid. You know what I, mean? I know teachers who do that every Sunday night. I'm like, no, make a friend. Call them on the phone. Don't say that in front of people, right? So um, if you're trying to grow a network, I would love to help you, help you do that. 
Um, and please keep in mind that you can build these warehouses of, of resources uh, just by being connected. I'm also over there on Facebook. I welcome you to connect to me over there. You're going to see baby pictures constantly because that's what I am. I had a superintendent one time. He wouldn't get on Twitter. He said, I don't care what my teachers have for lunch. I said, then they don't care what you want. I'm sorry your teachers are human. If you don't like the human part of it, then there's a bigger problem here. I'm a human. I'm sorry. I'm going to share things that might bore you. If you just want facts and cool things, I'm not your friend. I'm not the person to follow. All right, if you want to follow a real person, uh, that's, that's me. You know, failings and all. That's me. I role model failure too. Right? If I don't, you won't be brave. Right? So I go and I tell the stories of how I messed up just as well. Um, I'm going to show you another, uh, another uh, site, but I'm going to tell you the story that goes with it first. Okay? I work with kids who have dreams. Right? And I ran into this band. This is the band I ran into in Australia. I want you to hear what they do. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jordan. I'm Lee. And I'm and we Benny. are the Axis of awesome. awesome. And I'm Benny. Yeah, we've been a comedy rock band for close to 40 years now. Mm. And, and all that time, we've never had a hit. Yeah, and I'll just yeah but you guys know why. It's why? Because we never wrote a four chord song. What do you, what do you, what's that? What's a four chord song, Benny? Well, if you want to, all the greatest hits from the past 40 years, just use four chords. Same four chords for every song. It's dead simple to write a pop hit. Just four? Yeah, 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 these four. Here. One, two, three. Four chords. Sorry, let me get this straight, Chicken Little. Um, <laughs> what, you're, um, what you're trying to say is you can, you can take those four chords, repeat them, and pump out every pop song ever. Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Chicken Little. <laughs> Just listen. Do you recognise this? Uh, yeah, that is Don't Stop Believing by Journey. It's a great song. Very original There's a few more song. that fit. Check it out. My life is brilliant. My love is pure. I saw an angel. Of that I'm sure. Well, that's just two songs that are similar. That's forever not a young. Three I songs. I want to be forever young. I won't hesitate no more, no more. It cannot wait. I'm yours. This is the way you left me. I'm not pretending. No love, no hope, no glory, no happy ending. Cause you. So I show this to kids, and I say, and they see these guys doing this, and then I show them the four chords on the iPad, and then they want to jump in. So I got these little kids, and see my paper jams guitar there? And she gets to be Stevie Nicks here, you know, for my big parent night. And all I did was I take the lyrics, and I do this. I just put the chord there. You just push, touch that button when you get to that part, and you're playing the song. And I know it's simple. That's the whole point. I'm not trying to be Juilliard here but they get to have a rock star night with music, right? You could use that as reward. You could use that as embedded uh, vehicle for curriculum, whatever you decide to do. But we know music is powerful. We know video is powerful. So you, as a cook in the kitchen, you're just thinking, how do I use more cumin? <laughs> you know, how do I use more garlic? You know, How do I work this in somewhere appropriate? And if you can't do it, how about after the last round of assessments? How about then? At least do it then. Let's make that the, the genius hour for the district. Once that's over and you're out of that straight jacket, I understand when you're up to your butt in alligators, there's no time to drain the swamp. I understand. <laughs> but at least then, 
right? Do the dream stuff. And then, you know, after you do it a couple, you know it's going to poop its pants the first couple of times. It always does. It always does, but persist. And what you're teaching them is that my teacher is always learning. Yes, humans do that now. Research says that our kids are going to have between 5 and 15 careers in their lifetime. I've heard that all over the world, 5 and 15. Imagine, what in the world? How do you prepare kids for that? I have one theory not burdened by research. Here it is, ready? They have to learn to love to learn. Do this with me, ready? It's like too legit to quit. Hey, hey. <laughs> learn to love to learn. So whenever they're like complaining and grousing, hey, hey, hey. She always doing that. Why do you always do that? You better. You better, baby. You better. As I think of it like the Native Americans, they followed the bison. They didn't wait for the bison to come to them. They didn't fall in love with one piece of software. And when it went bankrupt, quit. They found the next thing and they worked with it. They used all of the bison, right? We, I think we got to be that way. How do we use this tool? And by the way, you don't have to use the tool the way they tell you to. Break it. Bend it. Try it sideways. I know a company that lets kids build apps, and they're really good at helping grade school kids get started building their first apps. Love to connect you to them. See, when they find out they can even make apps, wow, what could you do with that? My brain is like always going. You know, I went over to Australia and to New Zealand, and over there they call me Jack Black. He's Jack Black. He's Jack Black. That's what they say, so I try to act like Jack Black. I don't do, I don't do music clinics, but they told everyone I did, so they, a bunch of people wanted that. So then I had to go in and take iPads and do music clinics with music teachers. I'm an art teacher. I don't even know what I'm doing. But in situations like that, you just go for it. You just go for it. I'm here. I may never be back, but I'm here today. I'm going to do some things with kids. And we're doing the same thing I was just showing you guys. I'm showing them these apps, and their teachers are watching. And I want them to watch and think, okay, how do I leverage this? How do I leverage this? I know they love it. That's great. Not enough. But it's a start. How do I leverage this? That's what I'm asking all the time as I'm looking at these things. There's Groot Island and some of the kids I worked with there. It's an amazing place. It leaves you, but you never leave it. These are kids who can't speak English. And this is my little amplifier. Extend video. And I'm showing them how to touch the button. Four chord okay. song. Do it. All right. Take it away. That's the producer back there. <laughs> Make sure you touch the letter, yes. I'll be right back. Okay. I think sometimes if they see us having fun, they'll give things a try. If they see us take a chance. I had a kid named Wyatt in my class. You ever have a kid who's gifted and at risk at the same time? He's brilliant and he's always in trouble. Get a border collie and give it nothing to do, I dare you. It will dig holes. Wyatt was a border collie and no one was challenging him. And he was in my art class every year and I love him to death. His senior year he kind of lost it. Um, went to the cemetery, broke a bunch of tombstones, got five gallons of paint and poured it on the front of the school. He had some things going on, you know? And so he came back to my class and he said, I'm going to LA, I'm gonna be a rock star. What am I thinking? Oh God. <laughs> God, please take care of Wyatt. Please take care. I said, don't let the place change you. Be who you are. Be who you are. So my advice to kids is don't go there. Be great where you are and let the world find you. Because when you go there, you get in line behind 10,000 other people, some better than you, some worse than you, and some sleeping with the producer. <laughs> Why would you take your talent on the road like that? You know, become famous here and let the world find you. But he's off to L.A., and I'm just I'm worried, you know. Three years later, three years later, I get a text one night. He says, watch Jimmy Kimmel. I said, what? He said, watch Jimmy Kimmel. I said, okay. So I watched Jimmy Kimmel. Monday night tonight on NBC, we apologize to Matt Damon. We ran out of time, and I am very sorry about that. Between Earth and Sky is their debut album, playing us off the air with the song Save Yourself. See the full performance at JimmyKimmelLive.net. Click the Pontiac Garage. Once again, The Color. Good night. My kid's the lead singer. He looks like Jim Morrison. He was never in choir, never in a musical.
I'm standing in my living room crying. Damn it, one of them made it. <laughs> made it. You know? I hated that he had to risk because uh, L.A. and Nashville and Memphis are dream eaters. They make a living eating your dreams for money. So I don't want to send my kids to those places. I want them to try this from here without moving. That's possible, you know? Right after Jimmy Kimmel, the band broke up. <laughs> those guys have been living in the same apartment hating each other for three years. <laughs> So they broke up, and he started two bands since then. If you watch vampire shows on TV, you've heard why a lot of the stuff he does becomes soundtrack for these shows. And he comes and Skypes my classes wearing his leather, and he's all really cool. He's also still really nice, really approachable. So I start looking for ways to let kids stay in M in Kansas without going to L.A., and that's when I happen upon things. What if kids could, could take their creative music and distribute it worldwide? And that's when I found TuneCore. And I'm going to take you to TuneCore. Now, the reason I have songs on here and the songs on iTunes is because I have to try the tool if I'm going to teach the tool. I have to show the kids that I'm doing it. Otherwise, I'm talking out my butt. That's what the kids will say. All right, so I'm going to go over to TuneCore real quick. TuneCore.com. This is my band page. And right now, I'm sitting on $8.31 worth of profits. You're welcome. I can't even take you to coffee, right? I don't make a whole lot of money because I don't promote my music very much, but I record a song on my computer or my iPad. I upload to TuneCore. I pay $9.99, and it releases on iTunes and 40 online music players. Look on Spotify. I'm there. Please don't listen to my music. It's not very good, but it's very sincere. What I'm trying to do is show them, right? Show them you can do this. Now, let's pretend we're teaching financial literacy, and I've got, oh, by the way, you wrote a really cool essay. You read it out loud for her and published it as an audio book on TuneCore. And now we're watching to see if anyone bought your book. No one bought it? Write a better one. Right? Right? That's okay. If only grandma and mom bought it, it's not very good. Okay? That's important. <laughs> and that's all right. We have to get over getting mad if something doesn't sell. I'm going to go to money and reports and show you what this looks like. Okay? If I go to music sales, let's pretend this is your kid here. Okay? Let's look at uh, the months here. I can see how much I sold in each month. Let's go to songs and see which ones sell best. I've made a total of $178 so far on TuneCore, right? My songs that sell best, I can see I learned how to love, sold best so far. Let's look at countries. What countries do I sell best in? Ah, okay. I was looking at this and going, 240. I guess my clock is on Kansas time. Okay, that's all right. Okay, TuneCore is out there. I'm going to hang around in case there are questions. Thanks for hanging with me, even through all of that. Thank you.